I'm Alan Kenny, Editorial Director with REIT.com, and we're at REIT World 2014, NARIT's annual convention for all things REIT in Atlanta at the Marriott Marquis Hotel. Join me is Ted Bigman, Managing Director with Morgan Stanley. So, Ted, how do you think that investors should look at, uh, you know, kind of global property stocks as part of a multi-asset portfolio? Well, look, I mean, first and foremost, they should view them as real estate. Uh, in the multi-asset class portfolio, there's stocks, there's bonds, there's alternatives. Clearly, they should be viewed as real estate. Uh, their returns over the medium and long term should track real estate. Um, we also think that within real estate, they should view them mostly as core real estate. By that, I mean the company's own high quality assets in major markets. Um, there is a modest opportunistic portion, development, redevelopment, but most of the value uh, we view as core. Um, the other thing is they're obviously liquid. Um, that was viewed as a benefit in 08 and 09. Uh, by 14, people have forgotten the benefits of liquidity, although there's a cost to liquidity, which is volatility. Um, and so investors have to understand that there will be volatility to returns here. Um, so the, the summary is we talk to clients, they should view this as a complement or substitute to the core real estate portion of their allocation. And we think that's the best way to look at um, public listed global real estate stocks. And the bigger institutions, I mean, how do you think that they view real estate securities? And do the views change between different countries? Yeah, I mean, generally speaking, um, really since the um, early 90s, um, the pension funds have viewed real estate stocks as a proxy or complement um, to investing in core real estate. Uh, it does vary by countries. I mean, to start with, some countries do prefer real estate. We have Dutch clients who have 15% of their portfolio in real estate. A lot of the U.S. pension funds have gone from, you know, 3 to 4% in, in real estate to 7 to 9%. Uh, we found the large plans do use real estate securities as part of their core allocation. Uh, but they're so big that they tend to do a lot of private real estate. We have a lot of endowments and foundations that use real estate stocks as um, really the only core component and then they'll substitute or they'll add on uh, private equity for opportunistic return. So it definitely varies by size of entity and by what country they're in, but very much by 2014, it's part of the allocation. It's understood to be part of real estate. Clearly, we are seeing some growth in the uh, REIT approach to real estate investment. What's your view on the uh, size of the investable REIT universe? Yeah, so the, um, you know, we encourage investors to look at the developed portion for now of, of the universe, which has got to $1.2 trillion of equity cap. Uh, uh, numbers are hard to exactly quantify, but let's call that 15% of the institutional quality real estate in the developed markets is now owned by public companies. So we've had great growth over the years. That growth appears to be poised to continue. Uh, we have very high quality companies that will buy assets and go to the equity markets to pay for those. So we expect to have growth from uh, existing public listed companies. Uh, and then the IPO market continues to move on. We just in the last handful of months, we've had IPOs for companies that own New York office, that own Oslo office, that own German residential. Uh, and so the IPO market has continued and at roughly 15% of institutional quality assets being held by public companies and public companies having strong reputations and strong access to capital. Um, we don't know how high it'll go, but you know, at the maximum or currently the country that has the highest um, uh, integration has been Australia where about 50% of the um, institutional quality assets are held by public companies. So uh, globally we're at 15. Uh, I'm not saying there's going to be a triple anytime soon, but we're at 1.2 trillion, which is meaningful, uh, but there's no reason why we can't continue to have growth from here. Thanks so much for your time, Ted. Okay, thank you. And for more on this and other REIT news and analysis, be sure to visit REIT.com.